I head towards the eastern side of campus, nervously looking over my shoulders just in case somebody was tailing me. My rump feels sore from that blasted water tube, but I feel fresh as a flower both inside and out. I still don't like the idea of being taken from behind. Like anything good in life, it'll take some getting used to. I rub my nose, still... Oh! So he's on cocaine as well! So that adds to the, uh, psychological breakdown. Still tender from the hit of powder I did this morning. Okay, so that'll hit my monetization as well, because I have a whole thing about using drugs. Hope I remember that shit. It's not the most fashionable narcotic these days, but it works faster than coffee and doesn't give me the runs. <laughs> Don't try to give a plus side to cocaine. Luckily, the campus is as barren as Richard had predicted. Aside from a few security guards and professors, it's a ghost town. Peek my head into the main hall of the Firestone building, the door creaking loudly with my embrace. It's so quiet, the sound echoes all the way around the library and back like sonar. The coast seems clear. I try to shake off the remaining nerves and fix my posture as I strut over to the smoking lounge. This building was only finished right before I began attending, so it hasn't quite caught on with the student body. And even if there were other stragglers besides us, they're not likely to use their break to study. Richard had this completely thought out. He's probably been doing this since he got here. Maybe even longer. Before I knew it, I had been standing outside the door for a few minutes, and resting on the knob in hesitation. <laughs> it's not locked, says somebody. Rich's voice. This guy just knows everything, huh? Oh, there he is. Oh, God. I am so fucking worried about this now, huh? I open it cautiously and meet his gaze. He's sitting on a table, a cigarette hanging from his lips. Oh, there's a bear. There's a bear. Next to him sits a burly polar bear in a rugby uniform, legs kicked up and legs kicked up, sorry, and arms crossed. Didn't he say others? It can't just be this guy, and he doesn't exactly look the part. Marcus, glad you decided to join us. Come here, take a seat. I nod and pull up a chair, deciding to sit across from the bear who's going out of his way to look away from us. So, this is everyone? Hmm? Oh, right, well, besides me and Alexi, there's Biff. He's somewhere in here. The bear rolls his eyes and shouts in no particular direction, clearly annoyed. Damn, varmint! Get your creepy little ass out here! I hear shuffling and see a shy-looking chinchilla emerge from in between some bookcases. Uh, hello? He waves. Don't mind him, he just likes to watch. Watch... you two? Sometimes. Or just one of us. Alexi likes girls too. Biff really just gets a kick out of watching that. Huh. I don't mind an audience. What about you, pup? Their blunt discussion of such taboo topics catches me off guard and I choke on some spit. Richard giggles and Alexi rolls his eyes. Ahem. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, this is just a lot to take in all at once. What exactly do you two do? 
You did tell him to clean himself, right? Baby steps, big guy. He'll put it together. Do they think I'll simply prostrate myself for them, do they? Homosexual or not, there's a certain order to these things. I think I know what you fellows have in mind. Splendid! Thoughts? And I think that I'll have to pass if you think this will simply be a roll in the hay. Eh? Hmm. If he's not for it, he's not for it. Hold it! Go on, dog. I shade my tie and smile confidently. Negotiating has always been one of my better skills. We have a week. I want to get my feet wet instead of jumping in head first. You didn't think I'd just let all three of you jump me all at once for my first time, did you? Kinda. <laughs> Richard jabs him in the side with an elbow and hops off the table. His meter has changed from confident to defensive. If the bear isn't your type, I get it. Hey! My type? <laughs> you thought you had me all figured out last night, didn't you? I'll admit you had me wrapped around your finger in that moment. And I know that we'll have a lovely time together when it happens. The three of you invited me here to be vulnerable. Yet your defenses are still up. Touché. I want a night with each of you. Separately. Seriously? Who has time for that? Mark, I see where you're coming from, but <laughs> that's a bit... Fanciful. No, you're right. I'm being too sentimental, aren't I? We don't know you that well, so... Daddy you doing more than just a casual fling with a guy seems risky. All of this is risky, if you ask me. We still have rules, Lazarus. A code of conduct. Things went from being fun and fancy free to militant rather quick. The smell of their fear is overpowering their arousal. I don't know what I expected, but this can't be my only option, right? Cat's eyes are glued to the floor, ears lowered. Mark, try to understand. But people of our persuasion thinking long term ain't viable. We do what we do in private to prioritize maximum pleasure so that the risk feels worth it. And make sure the guys we mess with don't tattle to the higher ups. So that old scheme of the photo was for blackmail? Nah, that's more of the cis thing, though. Freak. Guilty. <laughs> I can toss a film out if it really bothers you. I can't help but want to document if a cute fella I come across. I don't mind him calling me cute. <sighs> what to do? I definitely can't pass up a chance like this. Should I just take the plunge or... Um... Oh, I shoot up in my seat. I assumed he couldn't speak. What is it, Biff? If you want to start with something easy, I want to watch you guys kiss. Kiss? I hear Rich chuckle as he sways over to me. Wait, 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 wait! This sounds easy enough. This sounds fun enough, sorry. I've never even kissed a woman, let alone a man. Pass. I don't kiss, guys. 
left, right, is my breath okay? Yolas, come on, Mark. For I know it, his face is mere inches away from mine. You can't be. And slides over mine, our fingers intertwining. J just like that, huh? He leans in, his breath smells like honey, de honey, tobacco, and menthol. No time like the present. Please, feel natural. Be the kiss I've been craving. I close my eyes and feel his lips press against mine. They're so soft. I never knew men could be this soft. If breathing gets heavy and I can hear him fussing with his clothes, followed by Alexi grunting in approval. Rich laughs gently in his warm breath and a shiver up my spine. His arms curl around my waist, pulling me in. I'm putty in his hands. His tongue starts to poke through bit by bit. It doesn't make me squirm like I'd always assumed it would. My, my tongue meets his and seems to know what to do without much instruction. Muff. <laughs> you sure this is his first time? <laughs> you do having fun, huh? There's no room for me to reply. Every time I move away for a breather, he peppers me with more kisses. I feel a glance and see the bear unbuttoning his shirt and rubbing a growing bones in his shorts. Y'all better lock that door. I'm just saying, like... Anyone could walk in at any fucking minute. <laughs> Richard pulls back, wiping some... Yeah, yeah, drool off his chin. <laughs> Christ, I've never seen Biff so hot and bothered. What, what, what is he doing? I can barely form a sentence. <laughs> he whipped it out. <laughs> Hagen! Hagen! We whipped it out! I want to turn around, but... I want to look at Rich even more. Alexi gets up and comes behind Rich, grabbing his waist and... grinding against his ass. Not one to just watch, huh? Shut it, cat. You guys look... good. You look... pretty good yourself. I don't have a type. His boxy snout pokes past Richard's and meets mine. Our wet nose is meeting. I kind of want a taste, too. Oh, there's a first time for everything. This guy's different from the others. He's classier. I get a second wind and move up to his lips, standing on my tiptoes. He seems resistant at first, keeping his jaw tightly clenched. Do you want it or not? He relents and I feel his long, urshine tongue embracing me. You don't have to go tongue fucking first on your first time, but whatever. His breath is hotter and I can smell the faintest hints of sweat. Yeah. From under his clothes. His pheromones are doing all the talking. This ain't his first rodeo. Richard, now unoccupied, takes the opportunity to start undoing my shirt, his protruding bulge rubbing against mine. I glance down to see the peak of. Okay! Yep. That is the signal! We cannot talk about that on YouTube! <laughs> the penis signal! We can do kissing. Kissing is fine. That will only get me restricted monetization, but it can't get the video removed. <laughs> this 
This, if we talk about it, can get the whole ass video taken down, so this will be synopsized. See you on the other end of this. Bye. I'll see, well, not bye, but see on the other end of it. Ooh, why does he still wish he was somewhere else? Aw, well he wishes he was fucking doing all this other crazy shit. Oh, they're back in their room now. Uh-oh. They're in his den. They're in the room. He keeps his eyes closed. There's already too much stimulation. They're all over him. They're, they're all over him with, with everything. They're naked. I'm giving synopsises whenever I can because I want to make sure I don't miss details. What the fuck does that mean? Because the thing that came right before that was him inserting himself into Richard. So what the fuck does that fucking have to do with it? I wonder if he even remembers. What the fuck does that fucking mean? That summer vacation, our folks were gone, we were so bored. Please tell me you didn't fuck Josh. Oh god. The door was always open. He knew what I was doing, didn't he? Oh my god. Teenagers are all the same. I made it so obvious. And he just kept watching. Kept watching what? Why did I keep it open again? It's too long ago to be sure. All of this is being interspliced with Richard and Alexi going about with them uh, talking about getting fucked or them fucking. It, it, I'm just narrating the bits that's in between. For the time after that, there's no way he didn't know. And soon, his door was left open too. If I could just... Oh, they'd notice he's been quiet. Is he even awake? Oh, jeez. Didn't slip him anything. Oh, boy. Oh, sure, just like the last guy. What the fuck? What are these fools even going on about? Oh, whatever. I don't care. Be if he tried to slip me something, I'd have let him. I barely feel anything anyway. They keep tearing at my flesh, grunting like beasts, using me. Maybe I can just slip away from all this. The door being open. Oh my god, what? An eye! An eye! A pirate on Wheel of Fortune. I'd like to buy an eye. Josh. You knew, didn't you? Did you come to amuse yourself again? Well, don't let me keep you waiting. You look up to me. I can't let you down. Whoa! Oh, we're back to the sex scene. Alright, so they're on the sex scene. He's noticing the fact that he's getting fucked and he's fucking... He's getting fucked by Alexi. And he is fucking Richard. That is as... Yeah, just... Just saying the word fucking. That is as plain a description as it can get. But then he says, But that's nothing for me. I can keep going. And then... This ominous ass music! What is happening? Oh, he's, he's going into domination. He literally said he's doing dominating stuff now. This is my show now, my rules. Josh, watch closely. What the fuck? This is how it's done. So, he's saying Josh watched him fuck people? Or kill people? Or 
We're in a hallway. There's no text box. Oh, okay. Another day, another exam. It's alright. Spent the whole weekend studying for it. Okay, before we go on with that, I get- okay, so... I'm confused, because the whole thing was like Mark hadn't had... the experience of being with a guy... Because, like, oh, this is how it's supposed to feel. Well, maybe he had only topped? I don't... I don't know what the f Josh was watching Mark do something. And maybe I'm just too dense to get it. Just gotta keep reading. Just gotta keep reading. Ah, but Professor Egan is a stickler for phrasing. Maybe I could... Oof. Ah, sorry, what? Ah, uh, it's him. I bend down to help Richard up from the floor and dust his jacket off. Uh, jacket off, huh? Upon standing back up, my hole twitches in pain and I bite my lip. He rolls his eyes. He eyes... His eyes dart to his disheveled appearance, as well as the exposed bite mark on his neck, which he quickly covers. I wouldn't have had to leave so many if he behaved. Whoa! He knows the rules by now. Wow. Jesus. Jesus. Wow. That's horrible. That's horrible. That's god fucking awful. So, are you sure this is a good idea? Using the art room, I mean. Yeah. It's always empty after five. And that bay window is just the right height for me to bend you over. Hey, not here. Everyone can hear us. He never second guessed our escapades before. Have I broken him? Good God! This is fucked, man. They didn't catch us in the gazebo. Or on the balcony. Jesus Christ. He has a long history of completely destroying people. This is really fucked up. And now I'm... This is really fucked up, man. Good lord. I have the keys to the art room already. Plus, it'd be a nice photo for your collection. Something to remember our time together with. A genuine smile breaks through. God, Richard looks so fucking tired. Yeah, that does sound nice. It's too bad about Alexi. Oh, Jesus! Alexi's out now? It's his family's fault for pulling him out before the end of the term. <sighs> Fuck! He fell behind on his studies. Couldn't keep away from me. The rest of the rugby team took his place easily. They put me in my place when I was being mouthy. And I knew exactly when to be mouthy. Well, there's nothing wrong with what we have, right? You were always my favorite anyway. Heh. <laughs> What's so funny? He leans against the wall, his once energetic tail now stiff and lifeless. Your voice. You kinda... sound like him now. Like Alexi? He nods. Yeah. And like me, sometimes. A mix of both. I guess we rubbed off on you. <laughs> uh. Mark. How much Mark is left, anyway? 
I needed to become tough like Alexi to survive, that's true. And I needed a silver tongue like Richard just to find out who was safe to fool around with. Oh! Holy fuck! Okay, that was the eye in the door. And at the bottom of it all. Eye in the door. He's always there. Josh, I imagine. How strange. Wouldn't it be crazy if there was no Josh and Josh was really like... No, well, obviously there is a Josh because Mark's mother called to get Josh's shit. But like... I don't know. If Mark... If there was like a weird slipped identity or something. I shrug and walk away. There's no point in talking with him anymore. If I need him tonight... He knows my door is always open. The end. Good God. Mm. Don't like it. Good Jesus fucking Christ. Hmm. Well, there's a huge alignment shifts. Like, looking at these characters, we, we still don't know a goddamn thing about. Um, I've forgotten what his fucking name is. The guy who doesn't even have a fucking uh, a, 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 a route yet. But Gabriel is like the purest soul ever. As far as we know. And then you just have fucking Mark with this huge long history of psychological fucking damage and fuck Jesus. And then there's Ken with extreme like possible murder and Battery, assault, maiming. Literally pointing a gun at Gray in this picture. This is, this is big, man. And then Gray believes that he's not even worth saving and a large portion of what the fuck is going on with his life. The When are we going to learn more about Gray and why he thinks that? Like, God damn, man. I just... Ah. This game continues to fucking astound me in so many ways. This game has laid so much groundwork with with its fucking characters, with its backstory, with its elements of storytelling, with the it, it its content and with its ways of doing what it's doing. If it manages to also have a satisfying crescendo and build up and way of tying it all together at the end, it could surpass Echo in terms of actually pulling off creepy, spooky, scary storytelling to its conclusion. Because that's been the biggest fucking thing about Echo games that fucks with me is that Echo Games have th the the character, the build-up, the storytelling. Burroughs has the storytelling devices and the presentation, arguably, to, you know, to, to rival it. But Echo Games never fucking pay it off. They have yet to do it. I'm talking like mainline Echo. Glory Hounds is is in technically in the Echo verse, and it is an Echo project game. But uh, and and Adastra is again also kind of in its own thing. I'm talking Echo Echo verse, like uh, Smoke Room Echo Arches. We can't talk about conclusions with the Smoke Room and Arches because they're not done. Mainline Echo. I'm talking that. If Burroughs can set it up 
like this. I am on board 100% with this game. They are rocking and fucking rolling. The presentation is so incredible and the storytelling is incredible. They are going so hard and doing so well. If they can tie it all off and make it a satisfying conclusion, they win. Burroughs wins. Anyway, I'm going to end this now. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, I have been the trained and professional Vivian Jade. I hope you all have a very nice day. So long, everybody. Bye-bye.